mother brings her six month old boy to your pediatric clinic for his first well baby visit. The pregnancy was full term and uh, uncomplicated. However, since the birth, the mother has not able to visit the pediatric clinic until now. Age is very important. In the previous cases, the age was uh, like I think 26 as well as 32 year old woman, but here it is a pediatric patient. And we are specifically talking about well baby visit. The pregnancy was full term, uncomplicated, but since the birth, the mother has not been able to visit the pediatric clinic and the mother is concerned about several vesicular lesions on the child's face and hands that developed a few days earlier after a prolonged outing at the neighborhood picnic, which is mainly because of insensitive to light. Photosensitivity is present. So this is very important clue in our case. Age is very important. Six month old boy is a very important clue in our case. And other important clue is like uh, vesicular lesion, several, several vesicular lesions on the child's face as well as hands. And mainly because of uh, prolonged outing, mainly we know that because of the sun burn, photosensitivity. On physical examination, you notice several like a friable bullet on the child's face and hands and uh, mild splenomegaly on abdominal examination. So friable bullet on the hand uh, of the child as well as on the face is another very important clue in our case, even though splenomegaly, we don't consider that important. So six month old boy, several vesicular lesions on the child's face as well as hands because of prolonged outing and the physical examination reveals friable bullet on the child's face as well as hands. And the child also has more hair than normal on the forearms, face and hands. So more hair is also very important clue here. And you consult the pediatric uh, clinic who suggest ordering a special laboratory studies to check for the uroporphyrin or the cuproporphyrin in the serum as well as urine. So nobody will give you this case. So we try to delete this point. So by this time, you should be in a position to answer this case. What exactly it is? Six month old boy, several vesicular lesions on the child's face and hands, prolonged outing, friable bullet on the child's face and hands and more hair. So this is the case of uh, congenital erythropoietic porphyria because of the age of six months, guys. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria. So this congenital erythropoietic porphyria is an autosomal recessive disorder which is mainly characterized by the markedly deficient or uh, deficient activity of Euro 3 cosynthase. Write down autosomal recessive deficiency of uh, Euro 3 cosynthase. So, where exactly this uh, Euro 3 cosynthase is involved? This Euro 3 cosynthase is involved in the conversion of uh, pre Euro porphyrinogen to uroporphyrinogen 3 or we can say that uroporphyrinogen 1 to uroporphyrinogen 3 because some textbooks will write uroporphyrinogen 1 to 3 mainly some textbooks will write like pre uroporphyrinogen to uroporphyrinogen 3 during heme biosynthesis and whenever this enzyme is deficient as i already told you that the uroporphyrinogen 3 before one is like uroporphyrinogen 1 so there will be accumulation of the uroporphyrinogen 1 and coproporphyrin 1, both, both the steps. So because of the accumulation of the uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1, these two specifically accumulates in the bone marrow, erythrocytes, teeth, plasma and urine. This is very, very important. Pre-Europorphyrinogen is also called as Europorphyrinogen 1. So Europorphyrinogen 1 to Europorphyrinogen 3 is done by the enzyme called as Euro 3 cosynthase. Whenever there's a deficiency of the enzyme, not only the Europorphyrinogen 1 which gets accumulated, there will be an accumulation of the coproporphyrin 1. So both 
accumulate in the bone marrow, erythrocytes, teeth, plasma, and urine. That's the reason erythropoiesis will be defective. That's the reason we are calling it as a congenital erythropoietic porphyria. So porphyrin deposition in the teeth leads to discoloration of teeth and increased levels of erythrocyte porphyrins, mainly the coproporphyrin 1, which is accumulated in the RBC, lead to increased hemolysis. This increased hemolysis can cause splenomegaly and also can cause mild to moderate jaundice. So that's the reason that the splenomegaly suggests that there is a Increased hemolysis, which is mainly because of accumulation of coproporphyrin 1 in the RBC. So the porphyrins can also damage the bone marrow, specifically again uh, the coproporphyrin 1 as well as uroporphyrin 1. Deposition in the bone marrow leads to an increased susceptibility to infections. So remember that the patients have increased the susceptibility to infections. And the porphyrin deposition in the skin results in formation of oxygen-derived free radicals, which can then damage cells and lead to photosensitivity. That is the reason the patient exhibits a severe cutaneous photosensitivity is very important. Remember, what is the diagnostic marker for the congenital erythropoietic porphyria? Patient presents with severe cutaneous photosensitivity in early infancy with the appearance of friable bullae and vesicles. This is what is a hallmark point for you to identify the congenital erythropoietic porphyria without mentioning about the friable bullus, vesicular lesions, photosensitivity, these three, they cannot even form a case for congenital erythropoietic porphyria and majority of the cases they'll give you it will be like a six month uh, old uh, like boy generally like that. That's the reason there is a congenital erythropoietic uh, porphyria what we are discussing over here. So the, there is a cutaneous photosensitivity in early infancy with the appearance of the friable bulle as well as vesicles. And uh, other skin symptoms if you see, there will be skin thickening, focal pigmentation, what are the other skin manifestations? What we will see in the congenital erythropoietic porphyria is thickening of the skin, focal pigmentation, and uh, patients also suffer from disfigurement of face and hands. And mainly because of the discoloration of teeth, there will be a reddish brown teeth. And splenomegaly is mainly because of increased hemolysis. So, Elevated levels of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 in the urine or the lab findings because of the deficiency of the enzyme uro 3 cosyntase And what is the treatment? Mainly, you need to suppress erythropoiesis because whenever there is increased erythropoiesis, there will be increased production of heme, then there will be increased production of products of heme biosynthesis like uroporphyrin one as well as coproporphyrin one so you don't want uh, that to happen so blood transfusion mainly to suppress erythropoiesis is the treatment of choice and splenectomy to reduce hemolysis so that's the reason like uh, symptomatic treatment can be given mainly the oral treatment of choice if anyone asks you about the congenital erythropoietic porphyria blood transfusion is the treatment of choice because Blood transfusion is mainly to suppress erythropoiesis and the splenectomy to reduce hemolysis. And uh, I already mentioned that the porphyrin deposition in the skin results in the formation of oxygen-free radicals. That uh, accumulation of the oxygen-free radicals in the skin can cause damage to the cells and lead to photosensitivity. So to prevent this uh, oxygen-free radical formation, there will be beta carotene supplementation is required because it is a free radical scavenger. And also if there is a severe bone marrow damage, then a possible bone marrow transplantation in severe cases is indicated in congenital erythropoietic porphyria.